I am back and today we are now going to do question 2 of 2015. Explain it. Explain this. So this isn't the better I was taught, but we, today we are now going to do something different. We are going to use a multiplication table. No, not that multiplication table, this multiplication table. So basically, you put all the terms of a long bracket as a horizontal row. And the terms of the short bracket as a vertical row. Then we multiply everything out like a multiplication table. So it's got a multiplication box just to avoid confusion. Just to avoid confusion between the multiplication table that you learned in primary school. Now we are now going to multiply everything like a multiplication table. So a, you know the rules on indices. The when the when the two terms are multiplied, their powers combine and add. It's just this way. It's it's indices. Now we are going to do the second row. Since negative b has no powers to combine, it just hangs out at a separate term. However, this one combines because it also has a b term. Great. So. Do you realize some terms which are similar cropping up? Well, there's one on the positive side and one with a negative sign. And there's always a rule of algebra which makes life easier for all of you. So, when the two terms have opposite signs but the same magnitude and same terms, you can just cross them out. Then we are going to play crossing game. And then there will be another a and minus 2b cube here. And then there will be another a squared b and minus 1 here. And cross out. And so. This algebra expression turns out to be a n plus 1 minus b n plus 1. The prime number 3 has the property that is 1 less than the square number. Well, here's the difference of squares formula. We need to find all the prime numbers which are 1 less than the square number. So we substitute b for 1. And 1 squared is 1. So, this means that in order for 1 on the brackets to be 1, there sh 1 on the brackets should be 1 for this to be a prime number. So, either this could be 1 which could be a0, or this could be 1 which could be a is 2. All other values of a do not make this a prime number. Great, just great. So, what is 0 squared minus 1? That is 1. It's not a prime number. Although, technically, you could consider it that because it's a factor of all the negative numbers. However, squared leads to the unit, which is basically no factors at all. So, not prime. So, a equals to 2. So, 2 squared minus 1 is 3. There, this is the only value of a which can generate a prime number. However, there are some, uh, actually a lot of prime numbers where its expansion is given by a squared plus 1. Examples include 2, 5, 17, 37, etc. You can go figure these out yourself if you have free time. Or you just want to all the time away finding out which values when a close certain expansion are prime numbers. There is a formula which can generate prime numbers all day long. Well, actually not all day long. And it's this formula. It's for, that's why 41 is sometimes called Euler's lucky number. Is there a positive integer k for which this is a cube number? Justify your answer. Prime numbers which are one more than a cube number. Now this gets interesting. So we can use the difference of cubes formula that we found earlier. Well, just to recap, here's our expansion. So we substitute the n to be 2. Yeah, it has factors. So we're now going to substitute b to be negative 1. Why? There, negative, negative 1 cubed is 1. So a cubed plus 1 equals to a plus 1 
a squared minus a plus 1. So, either this is 0, or this, I mean, this is 1, or this is 1. Great, so a plus 1 equals to 1, so a is 0. Or this is a equals to 0 or 1. Because if you go solve the quadratic equation, a squared minus a plus 1 equals to 1. A squared minus a equals to 0. And so a, a minus 1 equals to 0. By factorization, a is 0 or 1. So 1 isn't a prime number. Although if you took this exam 100 years ago, then there will be two prime numbers, 1 and 2. But now we now accept the con convention that 1 isn't a prime number. So we get with a is 0. And so a equals to 1 is the only solution possible. So 1 cubed plus 1 equals to 2. Then is 3 to the power 1 2015 minus 2 to the power 2015 a prime number? Explain your reasoning carefully. Well, the obvious way to do it using the formula equals to 3 minus 2, 3 2014 plus 3 2013 2 plus blah, 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 plus 2 2014. But the smarter way to do it is to realize that 2015 actually has divisors. That doesn't sound very smart, is it? But actually, it is a very smart method. One simple divisor of 2015 is 5. Yeah, it's 403 times 5. So, we can substitute 5 in this equation. Because A and B work for any numbers. Even perfect powers, like 3 to the power 5 and 2 to the power 5. So this is 3, 20, 10, plus 3, 20, 10, I mean, 29, um, 2009, 2, 5, plus, blah, 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 plus 2, 20, 10. So it is not prime, which means this 968, whoops, uh, my camera isn't pro working very well today. So this 968 digit number, in this case it's 3 to the power 2015 minus 2 to the power 2015, has a divisor of 3 to the power of 5 minus 2 to the power of 5 equals to 211. So this method is sometimes used to find the divisors of really large numbers. A uh, variant on this test is called the Lucas Lemma test, which is apparently checks the primality of numbers called machine primes or machine numbers to the power of n minus 1. It only works when n is prime. See if you can find the first few values of n. Well, the largest value that has been checked using pen and paper is 127. 2 to the power of 127 minus 1. And astonishingly, it was done using the Lucas Lemma test. And it was discovered about 200 years ago. Math is amazing, isn't it? Is there a positive integer k for which k cubed plus 2k squared plus 2k plus 1 is a cubed number? Explain your reasoning carefully. k cubed plus 2k squared plus 2k plus 1. Actually, we do not need the previous techniques described. Because, see, if we have k cubed, k cubed is obviously a cubed number. Then let's try k plus 1 cubed. Is you know your binomial theorem is k cubed plus 3k squared plus 3k plus 1. So therefore, this number falls in between two cubes, two consecutive integer cubes, and so this can never be a cube number. See you in another MAT video!